One of these days, I will learn how to start a video competently without having to do multiple takes. Today is not that day. I hope you're all doing well. I hope that we all had a lovely Christmas and New Year's. Um, I kind of didn't. Um, I fell ill on, uh, on Christmas Eve. I got some horrible bug, which seems to be going around. It, it may or may not have been COVID. It's hard to say, but it felt like a lot of people were coming down with something uh, around at that point. So I spent um, pretty much the entire Christmas period uh, coughing my lungs out. I'm still coughing a little bit now, actually. I'm trying not to do too much. Just gonna <coughs> set it off. It is that time of year again where I decide Am I going to make a video or am I just going to take some pictures of the top 10 robots that I bought uh, over the course of 2022? I tried to set a, a kind of ceiling for uh, for my purchases this year because I realised it was getting a bit out of control. I was running out of space. Um, I definitely have at this point. Um, so I tried to set a kind of boundary at like 50 figures for the year. Um, that didn't go so well. I bought 95 figures. This is the closest I've ever got to eking into triple digits with my purchases. And this is just Transformers. This is not including things like uh, like Lego or like or Marvel or Star Wars or things like that or other little, little things. So I failed that challenge. Oh well. But before I get into the whole top 10 list, um, I thought I'd just I thought I'd just go over like some of the highlights of of the year, because um, it was a it was a good year for a lot of Transformers stuff. TF Nation came back for the first time in person uh, since the pandemic began, you know, since 2019. I got to meet uh, Gary Chalk and Lindsay Rousseau, and then in Edinburgh in October, um, I got to meet Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. So that's two two Optimus Primes and a Megatron and a Lita One as well. That's pretty cool. You may not have seen that I made a little vlog about my visit to Scotland, so uh, have a little check out of that. There's a link somewhere. Is, is it? It's there or there, or maybe it's in the description. Oh, I know. The <coughs> TF. Let's go again. The Transformers RPG rulebook finally came out. It took about almost the entire year. I think this was announced around about this time last year. Um, and it finally is out. I finally have my physical copy. I also have a digital copy. Looking forward to delving into this, finding out how to uh, how to run a game, how to play a game. Um, I've done a bit of D&D in the past. I've been a dungeon master once, but uh, this I, I was very excited to uh, to get. Um, so I'm hoping that over over this year I'll, um, I'll have some very interesting stuff related to this. Don't hold me to that though. My brain is fickle. Anything can happen. <laughs> First ten episodes of Earth Spark came out. That was very exciting. Really enjoyed those uh, those episodes. It is precariously close to being my favourite Transformers cartoon ever. Like you know, surpassing Animated and Prime, which is uh, that that's major. That's that's pretty major. A lot of promise. Some very exciting storylines and some great characters. Megatron is amazing. Um, I love RC and Bumblebee. There's not a character that I hate in this show. They're all so good. I'm, I'm excited to see what the rest of the episodes from that season have in store for us. We had the Rise of the Beast trailer. It's so nice to be excited about a Transformers film again. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think it could be it could be really, really good. We'll see, we'll see. I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt. And at long last, we got two new episodes of Transformers Ascension, Way More episodes are coming, do not worry. Episodes three and four are in the pipeline and I'm very confident that they will be released this year. Right, enough fluff, let's get on with this thing. Number 10. At number 10, we have Siege Skywalk. Now, I've already spoken a little bit about uh, how I came across this figure in my TF Nation video. If you wanna find out the circumstances surrounding that, do check out that video as well. It's very, very good. This this guy is here mainly for the prestige. Um, you know, it's not the first of these Siege Seekers that I've bought, um, but I'm I'm just very pleased to have him as, as part of my collection, you know, to complete another Seeker Trio. Um, he does look very good though. He's mainly here just because he's a very hard to find figure and I got him for a good price. Number nine. Now number nine, we have R.I.D. Ruination. This is the 2001 uh, redeco of G1 Bruticus. 
Um, the This is the Hasbro version, so the colors are not show accurate, but they are very, very nice. Now, there is a reason that I wanted to pick this guy up. Early in 2022, I went into a local uh, vintage toy shop in the town where I work, and I came across an original Generation 1 Bruticus. Now, this immediately caught my eye, but I also remembered that my dear friend Larry of Larry Arts Productions um, is a big Bruticus fan. I looked at that figure and I thought, I'd rather it go to someone who is going to really, really love it than me buy it and then it just kind of gets a bit of attention and then gets forgotten. So I contacted Larry, um, we sorted out the uh, the exchange there, he's, he's now got it fully restored, it looks gorgeous. The original Onslaught fell to pieces though, that's a shame, but I was quite envious um, of, uh, of, his, uh, of his Bruticus, so I got my own version and yeah, he's really lovely. He's um, He's a little flimsy, but absolutely gorgeous. And actually, this is my first generation one combiner, so it's very nice to own this mold in some form. Oh, I am so glad that I switched this camera for vlogs. Number eight. Now, number eight has been a consistent desk spot for the majority of the year. It is Legacy Prime Universe Bulkhead. He's a bit weird because he's marketed as a Prime Universe figure, but vehicle mode has much more in common with his animated version. I love how he looks. He looks a lot better than the promo pics that we got initially. They may have gone a bit too hard with the g one of this, but I still love it. Now, I'm not sure why Bulkhead got Minicom ports and Armada Starscream didn't. I imagine there's something to do with the budgeting there. I know that the Energon weapons got cut out pretty quickly after wave one, but it's it's weird. It's weird. There's, there's definitely something happened with the budgeting there, which meant that a lot of these, these play features were scrapped quite early on. Number seven. Now, any of my friends in the Transformers circuit will tell you how much I'm seriously down bad for yellow fire truck transformers. I swear to God, one day that Sam's Club Optimus is gonna be mine. I very nearly did this year, unfortunately missed out once or twice, but I did get a very different one. This is Transformers Universe Minicon Suppressor. I spotted this little one while I was idly Googling their Thrilling 30 counterpart, the Minicon that came with the little cliff jumper. And as soon as I saw him, I knew that I had to have him. It's a very simple and unique transformation, and I just love how both of the modes look. I managed to track him down at TF Nation for three quid, I think. And I am very, very pleased with this pocket-sized piece of perfection. Number six. In sixth place, we have Legacy GT Universe G-Axis. Do you remember when we thought this guy was going to be an Armada Starscream replay? He does have some very minor discoloration there on his hips, but aside from that, God, he is excellent. He very much kind of embodies the, the presence and aloofness that you'd expect from a villain that's designed to be like worse than Megatron and force him and Optimus Prime to team up. Somewhere in their budget they found the money for articulated fingers like that and actually because of that he can dual wield his big old gun there. Oh, they got the head sculpt on this thing absolutely perfect didn't they? And even better he can sit on Coronation Starscream's throne. Right we're halfway through the list don't go Bailey on me just yet. Number five. I think it's fair to say that the whole Velocitron Speedia 500 collection stupid as the name is the toys have been excellent. The question can Came when there was a, a, a wave to announce that um, what was going to be in the leader price points. I don't think anyone expected Galaxy Shuttle from the Victory Universe to be the leader class figure for that wave. This thing is just beautiful. Um, I do enjoy the robot mode, the train mode is okay. This shuttle, man, this shuttle, absolute divinity. This is my first time with the Siege Astro Train mold, and I still want to find the original actually. But it's just so fun and swooshable. And I love, I, I love playing with this thing in shuttle mode. It's so great. Everything about this is so great. And so far, uh, touch wood, I don't see any sign of discoloration. I've got this set up on my desk as uh, part of a kind of uh, rocket launch setup. So it's this uh, on its on his little uh, launch bed, and then he's connected up to the Botropolis rescue mission set. I love this whole play pattern that that um, the War for Cybertron trilogy has kind of come up with of these like. The, the spaceport thing. I think that's really like such a clever integration of uh, of like a play a play feature. Number four. Number four. We have Studio Series number eighty six, not Studio Series eighty six. Bumblebee movie RC. This thing. Oh, mm, wow. Beautiful woman. This could very well be one of the best RC figures that we have ever gotten. 
Um, I was initially very skeptical about the Autobots in the Bumblebee film getting alt modes when they were designed around the kind of the structures of the kind of core cast, and like they were very obviously not intended to transform into anything. But man, they did RC so well. It's very rare that we come across an RC that isn't a shell former, and this one isn't. She utilizes every part of the robot in the vehicle mode so nicely and creates this amazing looking kind of Tron bike kind of thing. I did also get uh, Braun, who was a contender for the top 10 at one point, but RC, man, RC just cinched it. I love everything about this toy. She is beautifully made. 0011011. Now number two was another surprise pickup from TF Nation. Um, there are very few boat formers around and there are very few good boat formers. This is one of the very few good boat formers. This is Energon Dreadwing. Again, I've already spoken at length about this figure and how much I love it. I love the, the presence, the transformation, like these, these boat kibble pieces, the hull here, they're a bit awkward, but he wears them really, really well. He's just so unique and tall and, and weird that, you know, there was no way that he wasn't gonna be on the top 10 list in some capacity. Beautiful man. Number two is an interesting one. I couldn't figure out which version of this mold I wanted to represent them, so I picked both. We have Legacy Skids and Velocitron Burnout. Both of these are superbly fun, really, really well engineered. Lovely Skids here, you can see I've already done the Repro labels. I've also painted his eyes yellow, they just pop a little bit more. But then Burnout just stands out so well without any add-ons, and also that head sculpt is absolutely marvellous. I am very excited for the teased uh, Legacy Crosscut. Uh, that's going to be a repaint of Burnout here. The Thrilling 30 Crosscut is very dated, um, and I think that the Ascension vs. Auto Troopers do deserve a bit of an upgrade. Now, before we go into the number one spot, I'm going to do some honourable mentions. These were some very good figures uh, that I got throughout the year and were shortlisted for the top 10 spots but didn't quite make it, um, but they deserve a bit of respect nonetheless. Beast Wars Vintage Optimus Primal. Select Lift Ticket, or as I've now converted them into, uh, G1 Salvage. Legacy Needle Nose. Now, they arrived very late in the year didn't feel like I could put them on the list when I kind of already sorted it, but still very much worth mentioning, a great figure. Shattered Glass Collection Starscream was a contender for the uh, top 10. Unfortunately, I had to choose between them and Skywalk, and also this one started turning the color of piss. Two original G1 figures I got during TF Nation, Mixmaster and Swindle. Legacy Night Prowler, another consistent death spot for the majority of the year. Cybertron Sideways took some hunting to find this one, but very pleased that I did. And something that you may already have seen my reaction to with a little unboxing. This is a gift from Larry. This was a Funko Pop Shattered Glass Tread Shot. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Numero uno. And the number one figure for 2022, the mold so nice. I bought it twice. Transformers Legacy Buzzworthy Bumblebee Deluxe Silver Streak. Now I will admit that the Earthrise Datsuns do have their problems, but you cannot deny that Silver Streak is by far the best looking of all of them. And actually in terms of like plastic and mold quality, I've had very little issues with Silver Streak compared to Prowl and Blue Streak. This, this whole color palette is just marvelous, like that deep blue contrasting with the, the bright white and the silver. Mm, so good, so good. And like I said, I did buy two. Uh, this one here is using the Toy Hacks conversion kit to turn it into Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Season 3 Smokescreen. And we made it to the end. Thank you very much, guys. I do hope you enjoyed that little top 10 list there. If you had some favorite figures from the year yourself, then let me know in the comments. Why not? If you've got like a top 5 or a top 3 or a top 10. If it's more than that, like top 20 or top 30, then start... Start, start asking questions. I think next year I'm going to try and be a little bit more stringent with trying to stay within a limit of 50 figures for the year. But to wrap it up, I guess all I really want to say is um, thank you for all of your support through 2022. Um, it was a quiet year. Um, it was a tough year. Uh, but if um, you know, if we had any kind of interaction, whether that was online or if we met you in person, um, anything like that, thank you because you made it you made it a lot better don't forget to follow us on all the social medias and stuff facebook instagram all that kind of stuff do consider supporting us on patreon or kofi coffee you'd have thought by now i know how to pronounce that 
to get videos early, exclusive updates, lots of fun little things there. And your support helps us make awesome stuff and buy things that we can do to make our films even better. So um, to everyone who has supported us so far, thank you so much. And with that all being said, see you next year. Oh, gee, I can't do that one now.